In another AMV inspired tutorial, we're going to make this neon popping effect. Okay, so I've already prepared a couple of things in advance. One is the actual clip that I'm going to use. You may recognize this young lady from my Aura tutorial that I did a while ago. The other thing that I've prepared is a green screen mask of Our Lady. Uh, the green screen mask I created using the website Runway. There'll be a card appears at the top of the screen that points you to my tutorial that I did on Runway and how to use it. Okay, so with that being said, we're going to do work in Fusion. So make sure your playhead's over your clip and go into Fusion. So we're inside Fusion. What we need to do is basically get an outline of her and the various features of her. So to do that, we're going to use Edge Detect, but we only want her. We don't want any of the scenery, which is why we've got our green screen of the figure. So we're going to bring the green screen in. First thing we're going to do is to resize it so it matches our image. If you notice, our image is 1920 by 1080, whereas our green screen is 1280 by 720. That's because I'm tight and only use the free version of Runway. So select your green screen, come to your hotbar, and find resize and hit resize. This adds a resize nose, and if you view it, it's now resized our image to the right size. So next we need to get rid of the green. So shift space bar, type delta and add a delta key. Because this is a flat green with no variation, it makes a really nice key. So come to your inspector, grab the top eyedropper and just hit the green and let go. If we now view our delta, you can see that we have just our lady isolated. Next, we want an edge detect node. Shift space bar edge. If we view our edge detect, we get this effect. Come to the inspector, change it to grayscale edge. And we need to play with the various settings to get the degree or the detail of edge that you want. And this is going to be to your taste as to how much detail you want. Now we're going to use this as a mask on a background node. So if you bring in your background node and you can make your background do whatever you want, it can be a solid color or it can be a gradient or it can be a four corner, whatever you want knock yourself out. I'm going to go easy and just make it a four corner gradient like so. Now if we pipe our edge detect into our background directly we get this and this isn't what we want. So what we need to do is convert this edge detect so that all the masks are background of the lines and to do that click away Make sure nothing's selected, shift space bar, and type bitmap. Now, if you had a node selected, this automatically connects as a mask, which you don't want to happen. So once you've got your bitmap there, disconnect from your background into the yellow input of the bitmap, and then out to the background. At the minute, we've still got our shape rather than our lines. So with bitmap selected, come to the inspector and change channel to luminance and now we have our lines on a very basic level you can now take the output of your background and merge it back onto your original footage and you can see that you've got your outline but we're going to want this outline animated and glowing so we'll do that next so all these bits are to get the outline and now we're going to work on this column which is going to give us our glow and our animation so first node we're going to put in, select your background, come to your hotbar and hit color corrector, like so. 
put your color corrector in your viewer and nothing's happened. What we're going to do is we're going to animate the hue value so that as it changes, your colors change on your outline. And we can do that quite simply. Right click, modify with anim curves. Go to modifiers and set your scale. Set it to about five. So what will happen is that the hue value will rotate five times throughout the duration of the clip. If you want it more, make it a bigger number. If you want it less, a smaller number. But now we have this kind of effect going on as we play through. Next, we want our outline to pulse. So after your color corrector, select a transform. Put your playhead at zero and keyframe size. Come forward, say a couple of frames, put your size up to where you want it. And we realize that it's not sizing where we want it to. So just to go back down to get it to size around her, we need to change the pivot point, which is this green X in the middle of the screen. Come to pivot, just move it slightly so you can get hold of it. And then you can place it in the middle of our lady. And now when we change the size, it comes from her rather than off to the side. So make your size wherever you want it. Then come forward about five frames. This is going to vary depending on how you're timing it. And obviously, if you're timing it to a piece of music, then you'll need to mess around with these keyframes and your beats and stuff. Um, I'm not going to go into how to do that at the moment. Uh, if you want me to have a look at that at some point, I can do. Just comment below. So we've got our first sort of pulse going on. What we can do with the transform selected, if you open your spline editor, make sure to select only selected tools and zoom to fit. And this is the sort of spline for our pulse. So we can jiggle with that a bit. I don't profess to be any kind of expert on curves and stuff, but I guess somewhere around here, will kind of do the job and make it smooth. I don't know. You need to talk to Pete or somebody like that about this kind of rubbish. Not my area at all. So anyway, so you've got your quick pulse. As I say, if you want your pulse to be longer, then bring this second keyframe further along. So we've got the animation sorted out. Close your keyframes. Oh, actually, while well, we've got the animation thing going, I just discovered this today, so I will share it with you. You may already know it. Once you've got your animated sorted, uh, you, you may well have markers or whatever for your beats. If you, in your spline editor, select all your key points, press Command or Control C to copy them. You can now, if I can find my playhead, bring your playhead to where your next marker is. Click to make sure none of these keyframes are selected and press Control and V and it copies a new instance of your beat for you. So again, let me just zoom that out a bit. Bring your playhead forward to the next beat. Click so nothing selected. Control and V. And away you go. You can then repeat to your beats, as it were, for the length of your clip, and you end up with that kind of effect. Cool. To get the neon, it's messing about with glows, basically. Um, I used a couple of soft glows. So with your transform selected, shift space, soft glow, Add it in. Control C, Control V to paste another one. Uh, 
and then it's just about playing with your glows to get the look that you want. So obviously that's way too big or way too bright. So bring the threshold up a bit, maybe drop the gain a little bit, play with these to get the look you want. First glow, not too big. Second glow again, mess with the threshold, your gain, glow size. And then for both, you can sort of drop the blend a bit to make it a bit more subtle, maybe. Again, I'm not an expert on using glows, but this is the sort of theory. That is basically your pulsing effect. Obviously, you sort of do that for the duration of your clip, however long your clip might be. Maybe you want to do this just one pulse, so you'd have a clip of maybe 15 frames or something. But that's it, basically. And back on the edit tab, make sure you've got caching or caching turned on. Let it cache and away you go. You'd then have your pulsing effect with your music and jobs are gotten. Hope you found this helpful. Hope you liked it. Uh, please feel free to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Uh, if there's anything you want me to do tutorials on, hit the comment section, let me know and I will come up with what I can. And I will see you on the next one. Cheers.